Hello guys, Sutonia here. I'm in the process of putting together a very in-depth Kestrel guide and I've recently spent a great deal of time researching and providing a skill guide and list which I know is one of the areas I didn't do very well with in the original Kestrel video which is over a year and a half now. A lot of things have changed and a few things will be changing in the June 28th patch which will see lowered skill requirements on guided missile precision, advanced weapon upgrades and the nanite skill saving some time on the lower SP Kestrel fits. In the recent tier side patches the Kestrel has gotten a little easier to fit, mostly thanks to changes with the micro warp drives, shield extenders and a few better CPU options like the ballistic control units getting better. The guide is currently a work in progress but you can check it out, I'll leave a link to it in the description. I've gotten a, few, I've gotten a pretty comprehensive list of skills, fits and the matchup so far and I've put in a lot of work to it, about 20 hours and it's about 50 pages long so far. I've divided the skill list into three tiers, basic, recommended and polished. The basic skill list will get you into the Kestrel in around two weeks, less if you use implants and the daily free SP opportunity SP. The recommended Kestrel is sort of the cutoff point where, where I'd be comfortable taking the vast majority of matchups that aren't extremely difficult, and it takes about two months to reach this point. A great deal of the training time here though is in the fitting skills and missile bombardment fire which is required plus Kadari Frigate 5 because it's the most efficient skill. Uh, the Polish Kestrel does take the better half of a year to train into now. Uh, a lot of the skills in the Polish Kestrel are useful for a large variety of other ships such as navigation, engineering, shield and armor skills, and even the missile skills are useful if you plan on doing PV or PvP with other missile ships. The only really, the only re really specific skill is Rocket Specialization, which is only a rank 3 skill and you can leave this. So don't be too worried about the length of time it takes to train, you can definitely train different skills when going from the recommended Kestrel to the polished Kestrel and th the recommended Kestrel is good enough, you don't, don't necessarily need to spend half a year training into the polished Kestrel. If you're making a brand new character, I've got a full skill list of all the skills you'll need to acquire. You don't actually have to buy that many skills now thanks to the changes to new characters that happened around September 2015. And a lot of the ISK cost has gone down greatly as well since you no longer have to purchase thermodynamics which was 4.5 million ISK and a few other skills. The total cost for all the skills is 9.65 million ISK. It's worth mentioning though that a lot of that ISK price is in the nanite interfacing especially and the nanite operation skills. They are not required. They're mostly utility roaming skills. They are kind of nice to have but you d totally don't need them. I've also got a list of fits for each of the Kestrels, the changes in the fitting skills and a short summary. The basic Kestrel, as I mentioned, is designed for you to get into and fly within about two weeks of you starting your character. The main skill you'll need to train is getting rockets to level 5, missile operations to level 4 so you can train guided missile position, and target navigation prediction to level 4 so you have some consistency on rage missiles. The flight time rig is very important on the fitting because without it, your missiles will not be consistent since you only have a 2.6 second flight time with missile bombardment level 3. The flight time rig brings your flight time up to 2.99 seconds with the basic skills, so your missiles will almost always be consistent. The main weakness is that you have a poor scram length, but as your fittings improve, you can rectify that. On my matchup list, I recommend you only take the easy matchups listed for now and perhaps consider the moderate ones. You have respectable DPS still and decent range, so anything that's a short range that's short range or a tackler should be possible for you to deal with the basic fit. The recommended fit requires the CPU and power grid management skills to level 5 and also relies on you having missile bombardment 5 as well for consistent DPS, which are the main bottleneck skills. Uh, also have Kodari Frigate level 5 too. Uh, you now have even more range even without the flight time rig. And you can also upgrade You upgrade the scram to a faint scram so you have more scram range. And with a tech 2 ballistic control unit instead of the named one. And the fact that we don't need the fitting rigs and the flight time rig anymore. We get an extra DPS rig. So the main improvements from, from going from the basic Kestrel to the recommended Kestrel is significantly more damage. It now does 145 DPS cold. And it only takes, you know... A, about five, five to six weeks from the basic Kestrel to get to this point. You, you kind of, a lot of the upgrades as well is in fitting skills, which are going to be useful for every ship that you fly in the game. Uh, you definitely want power grid and CPU management level five, unless you're doing something very specific like trading or mining. Those are always useful skills to have. The main advantage of the polished fit is changing the medium shield extender from the compact one to the azeotropic one, which reduces your signature radius a bit, so it gives you a bit more damage mitigation. It definitely helps a lot in some of the matchups where you're going against long range guns, such as when you're fighting something like a, a rail comorant or s something like that. 
It also saves ISK too, since the compact medium shield extender is vastly more expensive than the azeotropic restrained shield extender. So it saves off 1 million ISK or so from the fit, which is nice. The, the main other improvements basically is the DPS is a bit better with your skills. Uh, this actually takes uh, about half a year to train into from the recommended Kestrel into this polished Kestrel. And the, the, as you can see the upgrades are not actually that significant of going from the, as going from the basic to the recommended Kestrel. As the recommended Kestrel to the polished Kestrel. So it's up to you. Uh, definitely once you're in the polished Kestrel I really feel like you can take a lot of the hard matchups and you know you can kill things like Daredevils and Sabres once you're in this polished Kestrel and you're flying absolutely perfectly very defensively as well. Uh, also a lot of the skills that I have in, in this uh, polished Kestrel list are not specifically for the Kestrel. Uh, getting really decent navigation skills is going to be useful for every ship that you fly. You know ships like uh, skills like evasive maneuvering 5 are always useful to have. So, so don't be too scared about the, the training time. Although it does take half a year to get to the polished Kestrel it, it's you know it's a 15 more DPS over the recommended Kestrel cold and it's slightly more effective hit points but it's not a huge deal. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the skills as well are, are kind of like a, a lot more n niche skills as well, like you know the, the gravimetric sensor compensation skill, the nanite skills, and again, like aside from mi aside from perhaps the missile skills and rocket specialization level five, pretty much everything that I recommend on here is very useful to you, no matter what you're gonna fly, like the armor and and uh, structure and shield HP skills, for example. So for the rest of the video I thought I'd just go through the skill descriptions, why I've set them at different levels for basic recommended polish. I also have a max column there but I'm not sure why uh, since you pretty much want everything to 5 except for a few specific skills which don't benefit you whatsoever but eh, it was nice to put it there I guess. So starting from the armor skills, there's two two skills in armor that are relevant to the Kestrel. The the first one is whole upgrades. This gives you 5% uh, bonus to armor HP per level. Uh, this is the least useful uh, of the shield HP of the uh, HP skills. It gives you uh, 29 effective hit points per level. It's worth noting as well that uh, if you have it at level four, the Kestrel has 420 armor. You know, blaze it. So you, you might not want to take it to level five. Uh, generally speaking, this is really inefficient. For example, mechanics, which is the structure HP skill, gives almost twice the amount, and it's twice as easy to train. So. It, you you start off this skill you start off with the skill at level two as well, which you you don't need to train it any further. It is worth pointing out that getting it to level four, which I put on the polish section, is nice to have because it unlocks tech two damage controls, which is useful for a lot of ships. A lot of ships in the game use tech two damage controls. You only need it level two to fit the named damage control, which you start out with. So you don't need to train the skill whatsoever, which is why it's level two at basic, but you won't need to train it. Uh, I recommend training it to level one for the recommended Kestrel, just because you know it's five percent more HP. It's going to take you like four hours to get it to level three. You know that's perfectly acceptable. That's a decent. Uh, time frame for the extra hit points. Uh, mechanics, uh, this skill improves your HP per level. This skill is two times easier to train than whole upgrades and it gives a bigger effective hit point increase so you always want to take this up before you take the whole upgrades thing. It's also worth noting that in terms of um, skill points versus effective hit points increase, this skill is actually better than shield management. Uh, shield management five, uh, sorry, shield management obviously gives you more HP per level because the casual has more shield HP and you have the medium shield extender. But because uh, shield management is a rank three skill and mechanics is only a rank one skill, it is slightly more efficient. Uh, it's worth pointing out that getting this to level four unlocks the nanite skills as of June twenty eighth, which is the which is a patch that's going to come in about a week from from when I'm making this video. If it's more over, after June twenty eighth, then this change is already in effect. But they're reducing the nanite skills, the uh, nanite operation. And uh, the other nanite skill, I'm not sure what it's called, that uh, that's, that helps with nanite paste. So getting it to level 4 is recommended. It's also just really efficient. So that's why I recommend training the skill to level 4. Uh, get it to level 5 for polishing because, again, it's the most SP efficient uh, increase to your effective hit points. Which is, you know, it's just nice to have. And, it, you know, Mechanics 5 is a useful skill overall. It's useful for everything and it also unlocks Assault Frigates, which is a, a ship type you may want to fly in the future. That kind of bad right now, but, yeah. Uh, propulsion jamming for electronic systems. This is the only skill in electronic systems that's relevant. Uh, you, level 1 is fine for the basic fit. You'll start out with level 1 on your character. Uh, the, the cap reduction doesn't matter too much on the Kestrel since uh, 
the Kestrel is very cap stable, and it's one of the reasons why it's I really recommend it to new players because you don't really need to micromanage any capacitor whatsoever. The only problem you'll have a the only time you'll have a, an issue is if you're fighting a new team ship, but because the Kestrel is a scram fighter, you're not going to be in new range anyway. It, it kind of helps with some matchups like against a Sentinel, like an all in, you know, it can make the difference then. I recommend you train it to level 2 because level 2 unlocks the. Uh, Tech 2 Warp Scrambler, which is a module that you'll use on the polished fit, or as you're going from the recommended fit to the polished fit, you can uh, upgrade to a Tech 2 Warp Scrambler, which is important because it increases the range at which you can kite away, which helps more with damage mitigation. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend polishing it to level 3, it's fine there really, it just kind of helps if you're fighting against a new team ship like a Sentinel, but it's a, a weird matchup that you're probably not going to take anyway, so... Uh, get it to level 2 basically and maybe consider taking it up when you've got nothing else better to train. Uh, advanced weapon upgrades, this skill is getting reduced in the in the June patch, June 28th. You won't need weapon upgrades level 5 anymore, you only need this level 4. Uh, the bad news is the Kestrel doesn't actually need weapon upgrades for the basic and the recommended fit and for the polished fit you need weapon upgrades 5 for it to fit. So this doesn't actually really change the Kestrel. Uh, that much, but it helps a lot for a lot of other other fits. So you know, if you want to get the recommended Kestrel, then you'll actually have advanced weapon upgrades already unlocked. You know, you can just train advanced weapon upgrades. So that helps a lot if you're flying other ships because uh, advanced weapon upgrades is a requirement on a lot of doctrine ships. If you're in a Nullsec alliance, and it's just a useful fitting skill overall. So you only need this level one for the polished fit. Uh, I put it level four on the max thing for some reason. I'm not sure why, but. It, you only need this skill to level 1 for the polished fit, and uh, it's fine for everything else, but it is a skill that you may want to train for other ships. Uh, capacitor management, you start out start out with this skill level 3, which is perfectly fine for the Kestrel. Uh, again, it's like completely cap stable when you're not running the MWD, and you're not going to be running the MWD when you're in scram wave range, so it, it, it's irrelevant. Like it, it, You can't even cap yourself out if you tried in the Kestrel. So, you know, it's worth taking up a rank or two because it can help a bit with nuke defense, if you're fighting against a, a Sentinel uh, all-in or, you know, like a Nutrist or something, it, it can help a bit. But those are very weird matchups that you're not going to encounter very often. So I wouldn't waste my time, I wouldn't waste your time training this skill unless you've got everything else maxed. Or already for the polished fit. Uh, same, exact same story for capacitor systems operation. You do not need to get this to you this fine the level you start out with, level 3. Uh, train it to level 4, you know, when you get a time, it's 3 times easier to train than capacitor management, so you know, get this one first if you're going to start putting up your cap skills. Uh, you, you might want to train them anyway for other ships, but for the Kestrel it's not, very, it's not that relevant. CPU management level 5 is super important for every single ship in the game because it increases your CPU by 5% per level. You're going to need to get this to level 5, unfortunately, pretty soon for the recommended fit. Uh, nanite interfacing, this skill is not essential, by the way. It's also pretty expensive, it costs 5 million ISK. So you might not want to buy it straight away. I, I did recommend getting both of the nanite skills level 3, but I, I kind of think that maybe maybe that's a mistake for me, recommending this level 3. Because uh, at level, like you can perfectly roam and fight without them. And it, it would save some time and some ISK for you not buying the nano interfacing and nano operation skill. So nano interfacing increases the repair time by 20% per level. The reason that's the reason why I recommended getting to level three because getting that 60% faster repair time uh, definitely helps out a lot. Like you know, it's al it's almost like getting close to like halving the amount of time you have to sit in a safe spot or on a gate, like you know, repairing the the damage. And then operation uh, is also, I'm not sure how useful it is, you need to get it to level 3 anyway, just to train the nano interfacing skill. Uh, it reduces the, it reduces 5% less pace used, it's 5% less pace used per level. But it's, I'm not sure entirely how this skill works, to be fair. But I, I with the, the way that everything else works in the game, I think it's rounded up. So, this skill is actually not very useful for a frigate. Unless you're repairing something that costs that costs more than twenty pace to repair, then it's actually a useless skill. And from from my experience, I don't think even like almost fully burnt out for Tech Two rocket launchers. I'm not sure how the game interacts with grouped launchers as well. I'm not sure if it treats them all as one big blob or if it tries to do them all individually. There's actually a bug in the game where if you tried to repair group launchers you don't have enough paste for the full stack but you have enough paste for like two or three it, it will say it failed but then it will try and repair the other launchers 
and use up the pace to do that. And this is actually a bug that can cost you your ship because it won't let you fire your guns when it's happening. So you, you need to be aware of that. I, I don't actually think nano operation in itself is useful, which is why I just say get it to level 3 so you can train nano interfacing, which is the, 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 the decent nano skill. Uh, nano operation itself is probably not useful. But again, it's, it's a roaming utility skill. You don't have to train it. You know, you, you can leave it at level 0, it's fine. Uh, power grid management is the same story as CPU management. You need to get this to level 5. It's essential on a lot of ships because it increases the maximum power grid output on every ship in the game. Uh, not, not much else to say about that. You need it to level 5 for the recommended tier. Thermodynamics 5, it, uh, sorry, thermodynamics is a very important skill. I rem recommend getting it to level 3. You'll def there's definitely a huge difference between level 1 and level 3. Uh, wound polishing, I recommend getting it to level 4. Uh, I, I put a bit of an explanation about what it does. Uh, it really, really helps when you're, when you're trying to catch kiting ships because uh, normally a, a micro warp drive takes, I think it's 14 hit points of damage per level, but that, that's reduced by 5%. And all modules have 40 HP. So le leveling up the skill doesn't actually increase the amount of save cycles you get on the micro warp drive, but it does increase a, a lot for like web and scrams. It definitely helps, especially when you're fighting in some harder matchups, like against uh, sabers and uh, you know like a everything that's a hard matchup where you need to like play as defensively as possible and abuse as scram range as much as possible. It's a very very useful skill. I recommend you polish it to level four, and this is probably one that you might consider getting to level five as well. Uh, it's useful for every ship in the game almost. That, you Know, anything that's not a PVE ship or a mining ship, whenever you're fighting, this skill is useful to have. So I recommend getting to level three. Level four is uh, you know a nice a nice touch up. Weapon upgrades. Uh, this skill reduces the CPU cost of your launchers by five percent per level. Uh, if once you get the skill to level four, it unlocks the Tech Two Ballistic Control Unit, which is gives you a bigger DPS increase. Uh, since this helps with DPS and with fitting, basically, it's a very nice skill to train. Uh, this is you. You start off this start off the get start off your character with this skill at level two. You're gonna need to train it to level one for the basic fit, and you need to train it to level four. Oh, sorry, you're gonna need to train it to level three for the basic fit. You need to train it to level four for the recommended fit, uh, and as as it also unlocks the detective ballistic control unit as well. And you need it to level five to fit the polished fit. Uh, the, the the nice thing is that you only need to level four now to to unlock advanced weapon upgrades after the June twenty eighth patch. Uh, moving on to the missile skills, there's a lot to say here. Uh, missile bombardment, uh, sorry, gizzle, uh, sorry, guided missile precision. This skill is the most important missile skill in in the game for application. It reduces the the explosion radius of your missiles by five percent per level. Uh, I, I recommend you get this level four. Uh, level three is fine for the basic fit. I would not PvP without this skill trained. Do do not. You need to train the skill. You need to. You, the good thing about the skill changes is that the missile bomb, uh, sorry, miss, guided missile precision used to require you have missile launcher operation level five to change. CCB are reducing that to level four, which means this is going to save you a lot of time. This is why the basic fit is losing so much time on it. Like the the Kestrel used to be one of those figures that took a long time to get good at, and now with this uh, only requiring missile launcher operation level four, it's going to take off like a good five days off the training time. Uh, for the basic fit, get it to level 3, and you definitely want to get this to level 4 pretty fast, because it really, really helps. Uh, well, uh, when you are, when you are, The difference between level 3 and 4 is about 5% DPS increase on most frigates in the game, so it's, it's huge. Uh, missile Bombardment, I recommend you look at my flight time video on the EVS Easy channel, and you'll understand completely why you need this at level 5. Uh, I'll give you a basic rundown. So, uh, uh, rockets normally travel uh, 2 seconds, and this is increased by 10% per level. So every level that you have missile bombardment increases the, f the flight time of, of rockets by 0 0.2 seconds. So, but the way the game treats uh, flight times is that it can only have a flat, flat flight time, and anything that's above a flat number is treated as a bonus percentage chance to go to the next flat number. So if you only have uh, missile bombardment level 3, and th this is this was explained a bit in the basic Kestrel uh, fitting, uh, why I used the flight time rig on it. If you had a 2.6 flight time, it would only travel uh, travel two seconds, 40% uh, of the time, and 60% of the time it would go the three seconds. So 40% of the time, you're potentially losing that much DPS. You know, you're potentially losing 40% DPS when two out of five of your missiles don't even make it. So you absolutely need to train this to level five. 
this is the most important like missile DPS skill in the game. You need this. Need this level five. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, this is one of the skill. This is a skill that you're probably going to spend most of your time training, going from the basic to the recommended Kestrel, so you can take off that flight time rig. Uh, missile launcher operation. Uh, this is a very efficient DPS skill. It increases your DPS skill uh, two by two percent per level, and it's only a rank one skill. Uh, it recommends getting it to level 4. Level 3 is fine for the basic feat. You need to get it to level 3 anyway to, to train the other skills. The other missile skills. In fact, it, it should be level 4. Like This is this is great. This is where you don't do, don't do things live. Because you need it to train guided missile precision. I don't know why I had that at the 3. But anyway, you need that skill to level 4 to train guided missile precision. And you know, four is fine for the recommended fit. Recommend uh, for the polish fit. Getting it to five is nice because you know it's a rank one skill, two percent more DPS. Uh, next skill on the list is missile projection. This gives this increases your range by ten percent per level. It's twice as hard to train as missile bombardment, but you need to get missile bombardment five anyway. So uh, you know, it increases the range of your missiles. Also, since it increases the velocity, it it decreases the time it takes your missiles to hit dudes if you're fighting at the same range. So you know it's a nice skill. It's very useful when you're fighting in harder matchups where you want to fight outside uh, scram range sometimes. Like against the saber, I'd burn away from the saber, and once he gets to about 16 kilometers from me, he starts taking missile volleys, and like getting like five or six missile volley volleys into like one of the harder matchups before the fight even starts is super super key for killing those ships. So uh, is it? It's, it's fine at level 4 though, like you, you might want to consider it getting to level 5, but it only really helps in those very hard defensive matchups. Uh, your range is fine at, with it at level 4. A rapid launch, this is uh, basically missile launcher operation renamed. It, it takes twice as long to train, but it's twice as good, because it gives 12% to missile rate of fire per level. But unlike missile launcher operation, it doesn't actually unlock anything. Uh, this is a very uh, efficient DPS skill. It's also uh, more powerful than missile launch operation because of how rate of fire mechanics work. Uh, if you have a 20% bonus to rate of fire, it's actually a 25% DPS increase because 1 divided by 0 0.8 is actually 1.25. So it's actually a bit stronger to get this one to level 5 instead of missile launcher operation level 5. Uh, so y you might want to consider getting this level 5 before missile launcher operation level 5 but then again missile launcher op operation level 5 takes e is half as easy to train so you, you get that advantage quicker so it's, it's up to you it, 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 but you know that both of both rapid launch and missile launcher op operation level 5 are, are nice skills to get to level 5 when you're polishing the Kestrel up rocket rocket specialization level, uh, is a is a skill that only applies to tech 2 rocket launchers and it gives a 2% bonus per level but it's still kind of efficient. Uh, Warhead Upgrades, which is a skill we'll talk about a bit later, gives 2% damage per level, and that's rank 5. So this is way more efficient than that. Uh, it's not awful, uh, I, I, and it's also going to give you more be benefit than training like Guided Missile Precision to level 5, or you know a, a, a lot of the other like really inefficient skills. So yeah, I'd polish this to level 5 because it's pretty decent. Uh, unless you don't plan on flying the Kestrel too much, in which case, you know, level 4 is fine, and level 4 is what I recommend for the uh, recommended Kestrel, because if level level 4 is just going to be fine for you. Uh, rockets, a skill you get to level 5, no questions asked, because you need tech 2 rockets, you need to be able to use rage rockets to take full advantage of the Kestrel. And it, it gives you 25% more damage with it at level 5 anyway, so, you know, you really need this skill to level 5. Target navigation prediction is kind of like guided missile positions, uh, little brother this skill is uh, also very important it's not as effective as gmp per level but it's more than twice as easy to train and i'd recommend you get this level four also level four for the basic fit it's very important uh, w without this skill at level four and guided missile precision level three you'll lose too much dps to rage dps and it'll be un uh, to like the the rage application and they'll be unusable but once you have gmp and this skill at level four you can apply it to most figures in the game uh, we, uh, at least they're going to always be better than Kaldari Navy missiles. So get this to level 4 and polish it off to level 5 because it's kind of useful. It, it really helps against uh, some matchups like against interceptors and the attack frigates mostly. But it, it's never going to save you from afterburner and dual prop ships. Uh, warhead upgrades. This skill is very inefficient. Uh, it's not much really to talk about. It gives you 2% to missile, to flat missile damage per level, and it's a rank 5 skill, so it takes ages to train. 
and it's only 2%. So I, I, for the basic fit, I recommend just get this level 2. You know, it's going to take you 4 hours to get it there, but you know, it's 4% more damage. It's worthwhile. Uh, for the recommended fit, you know, just put another rank in it. For push fit, I, I wouldn't take it to level 5. I'd actually I'd just leave this at level 4 because it's just too inefficient. And when you're maxing it out, maxing out the cash flow, you know, you can take this level 5, but, I mean, it's a like a 20 plus day train for 2% more damage. It's not worth it. Into the navigation skills. Uh, acceleration control is a rank 4 skill, so it's pretty inefficient, but it increases your micro optimized skill by 5% per level. You can actually see a pretty huge di uh, difference between, like, especially combined with navigation, because like navigation and acceleration control basically stack with each other. Uh, uh, you can definitely see like a big difference between like the starting skills and like just getting the basic skills and the recommended skills that I recommend that like, you'll definitely see like an extra like 150 meters per second just from putting a rank in both of them with micro objects on. Uh, it's worth pointing out that this is obviously not as important as navigation because navigation is four times easier to train and also once you're scrammed acceleration control doesn't help you but navigation still does because it increases your base speed which increases the time it takes for people to get on top of you and it increases your potential to mitigate damage so it's pretty inefficient but i recommend i recommend you get this level four for the basic fit level three is fine you start off the start off with the skill level one definitely want to put it to level three before you uh, consider because you know you, you need to get this level three just so you can reapproach gates and you can burn away uh, and once you get once you start i would recommend polishing this to level five but it's a, a very low priority polish like i wouldn't get this to level five until you get the other navigations to level five it helps a lot more in 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 fights where you're trying to cut, catch a kiter more than you know actually kite that more than like scram kiting stuff, and it just helps like reapproaching gates and stuff. It increases your survivability in Nullsec. Evasive maneuvering is five percent more agility per level. Uh, it improves your turning speed, so it's always useful. It's useful for every ship in the game, basically. Even if you even in a PVE ship, you know it, it means you can get out of an anomaly faster or warp to the next anomaly faster. You know, it, incre it increases your ticks, man. This skill is great. It helps a lot with slingshotting as well because you know better turning speed means you can, like you know, twist around and get on top of someone faster. It's useful for everything, and it's only a rank two skill. It also unlocks interceptors at level five. I recommend you get it to level four. Put it to level five when you're polishing, but navigation is the most crucial one of these skills. But still, it's nice to have, and again, like unlocking interceptors is very nice to have. Nice utility to be able to, you know, shut like use an interceptor as a shuttle through Nullsec if you're in the Nullsec Alliance, uh, and just you know through High Sec or whatever. It's just, just makes moving your your current clone or position like much more. Uh, it's it's a nice skill. <laughs> Navigation. Uh, this skill is the most important one because it's only rank one and increases your base speed per level. So it increases the, it increases your ability to scram kite basically. I recommend you uh, you, you tra train this to level five. Uh, pretty, this is actually one of the skills I recommend you getting to level five for the recommended Kestrel that isn't missile bombardment because I like it's one of the ones that isn't essential. But I still feel like it's very very strong. You need to get this level five. Uh, level four for the basic fit. You start out with this skill level three. So it doesn't take too long to train. Like it's only going to take you like 16 hours to put it to level four, and then like level five is like three days and something. Especially since uh, navigation skills don't take as long to train because they're perception intelligence based. And I recommend you put 25 points into perception, 23 into intelligence for for this Kestrel. But it's a very good overall remap. And if you want to make some kind of like Kestrel Smurf, like you can use the other bonus remaps and stuff to to get it faster. But yeah, it's a nice skill. Uh, warp drive operation is a utility skill. It doesn't help you fighting, but it, it does help uh, warping around because it reduces the cap cost to warp by 10% per level. For the basic extra, level 1 is fine when you start out with. It's, it's mostly just a utility roaming skill, but it's very easy to train. You know, it's a rank 1 skill, and again, you know, perception is a navigation skill, so it's going to be the fastest skill that you're going to train. Getting it to level 3 is perfectly fine. You know, even for the polish, level 3 is fine. If you're maxing out the cash you know, maybe you want to take it to level 5, but that's about it. On to the rigging skills. Jury rigging, it doesn't do anything. The only reason why you want to train jury rigging is to get it to level 3, so that you can train launcher rigging, which requires jury rigging to level 3. Jury rigging doesn't do anything, it's pointless. So, level 3, that's it. D don't train it. Uh, launcher rigging decreases the CPU, C CPU penalty on missile rigs per level. A lot of people understand misunderstand this skill. 
So it says 10%, it's on the skill description, it says 10% to missile rig drawbacks per level. But basically, missile rigs have a 10% CPU penalty. But every skill that you, every skill level you put into this reduces that by 1%. So if it, if you had it level 2, it would be 8% penalty. Level 3, 7% penalty. Uh, but the, there's not too much else to talk about in terms of that. But basically, you need, uh, you need to train this level 3 for the recommended fit, for it to actually fit. And you need to put it to level 4 for the polished fit. Moving on to the shield skills. Shield management, uh, this increases your shield HP per level. It's probably the probably the second most important skill in this thing. The, the fitting skill is probably a bit more important, but you don't actually need to take that to level 5. Uh, th this increases your effective hit points by 107 effective hit points per level. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, mechanics is more SP efficient, but this gives you more, more effective hit points per level. Uh, you start out with this skill at level 2. Uh, for the basic fit, just put a rank, put one point into it to get it to level 3. For recommended, I recommend you take it to level 4. And for polishing, you put it to level 5. It's worth noting that I don't think that the HP skills are as important as the DPS skills. Like I think DPS is way more important than increasing your effective hit points. So I'd recommend you train these shield skills after you get the navigation and DPS skills because those are more important to your ship. Uh, shield operation is a utility skill. It's very easy to train though since it's only rank 1. Uh, just put a point into it to get it to level 3 for the basic fit. Uh, it increases your effective hit point peak regen by 0 0.9 effective hit points per level, which, which is nothing. Uh, the only reason why you'd want to train this is that it's a, a nice uh, utility skill. Uh, if you get into a fight, uh, let's just say you kill a ship and there's like 5 other ships there, you know, you warp away, you're in like... 10% shields and then you go to a safe spot and you're just waiting for your shields to charge back up so you can get back into another fight and uh, when you're roaming in no where you don't have option to dock up and to refresh the shields yeah it's kind of nice to, to get that extra region it doesn't help at all in combat effective uh, uh, combat basically you know, it, don't think that this is helping you in combat because it basically isn't uh, it's a very very minor combat bonus like it, it doesn't even allow you to, to tank an ibis from level 0 to level 5 so yeah it's not too useful but it is very efficient so i recommend getting to level 4 for the polish fit level 5 but very very low like uh just t take this level 5 when you kind of feel like you you don't have anything else to train because you know the, the, the extra speed does help a bit but it's only a utility skill. Shield upgrades, fire, uh, shield upgrades. Uh, this reduces the power grid cost of shield extenders by 5% per level. This is a fitting skill. Uh, you need this at level 3 to be able to fly the basic and the recommended Kestrel. You start out with this skill at level 2, so you just need to put one rank into it. It's a, kind of easy to train, and you only need it to level 4 for the polished Kestrel. Uh, I reckon <laughs> for Max, put it to level 5 because you know it's useful on any shield extended ship. So yeah, it's kind of a nice skill. Not too much to talk about. And you, I think you you need to train it up a bit as well. If you want to fit like uh, the uh, Tech 2 extenders for like large shield extenders. If you're flying like battle cruisers and, and cruisers and above. Spaceship Command, uh, Kadoi Frigate. Kadoi Frigate is the most important DPS skill. It's very, very efficient. Uh, since uh, it basically gives you... Um, a missile projection which is a rank 4 skill as well as uh, the rocket skill in one so it's basically like a rank 5 skill but it's only rank 2 it's also useful because it unlocks so many so many things for you getting Kadai level 5 Kadai frigate 5 you know obviously it unlocks every single tech 2 Kadai frigate it also helps if you're going to fly garusta ships uh, the worm the the gamma and the the Succubus use Kadari Frigate. So it's nice to have in general. Also, like if you're doing exploration, like it helps on your Heron. It helps like for Griffin. Like it just gives you so many options. It's there's so, there's a ton of ships that use this skill. So you know, Kadari Frigate 5 is nice. Uh it's get it to level four for the basic fit. You start out with this skill level three now, I think. I need to double check, but I I'm pretty sure you do. And uh Get get it to level get it to level five for the recommended fit and because yeah, it's just super efficient and you kind of need it. It's like, like one of the only other skills that I recommend getting to level five. Uh, spaceship command is another skill in the spaceship command section. Uh, it's it's less SP efficient than evasive maneuvering. It, it only gives two percent agility per level rank one. 
uh, evasive maneuvering is 5% per level, rank 2. So uh, evasive maneuvering is much better. This skill is, is not as efficient. So always get evasive maneuvering to to, to uh, upper rank before you get this upper rank. Uh, for the basic fit, you start out with this level 3. Level 3 is fine. Uh, train it to level 4 uh, for the recommended fit because the 2% agility is kind of nice. You know, it only takes like 20, 20 hours to train. So it's kind of efficient. But, you know, this is like kind of like at the bottom of the list. And, you know, it's a very, very low priority polish level 5. You know, you, you want to consider getting all the navigation skills level 5 before you consider spaceship command level 5 because it is a very minor benefit. But it's still a benefit. And, you know, it's only a rank 1 skill, so it's not terrible. But pretty much all the other navigation skills are going to give you a, a bigger benefit. Even acceleration control I'd probably consider taking to 5 before spaceship command. Uh, moving on to the targeting skills. These skills aren't super important, but yeah, we'll, let's talk about them. So, gravimetric sensor compensation. This increases the your all Kodari ship's sensor strength by 4% per level. So, it is a nice skill to have. It's not a, a specific casual skill. Uh, it's One thing to know, this skill is never going to save you from a dedicated ESM ship. If there's a griffin on the field, it's not going to change anything. If, if there's a falcon, you're fucked. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter if you have the skill level 0 or level 5. You're fucked if there's a dedicated ECM ship. But it does help a lot with uh, EC300 uh, drones. Uh, some frigates might use them on you, like a, a Drami or a Tyrannus or something. Uh, I don't know. Some ships that don't want to fight as well. Like, a good example might be like some travel fit Nereus. Although you should probably avoid the <laughs> avoid that, that specific caller. Unless you know it's not a PvP fit. But yeah, it's just kind of nice. Uh, mining barges as well, you know, like uh, I, I've lost a few kills on ships like Hulks and Retrievers because they put EC300s on me. And, you know, just having that extra chance, that uh, extra time to be able to kill them and kill the ship, you know, it can make the difference between getting a kill or not against those ships. It, it, there's not really that many PvP frigates that would use EC300s on you, though. So I I'd probably, like, level 0 is fine for the basic fit. You don't need to get that skill. For the recommended fit, you get it to level 2, man, because it's just going to take you, like, a couple of hours to get it there. And, you know, 8% sensor check is kind of nice. And, you know, get it to level 4 when you're polishing. And if you really want to max it out, get it to level 5. It, it does help for every Kadari ship that you fly. And as a side benefit, it does make you slightly harder to probe out. So, you know, it's got some utility, too. But uh, there, there are better skills to train. It's pretty much the, the entire story of the targeting thing. You know, it's the bottom of the list. Train them when, you, when you've got everything else. Uh, long range targeting. This skill increases your lock range by 5% per level. Uh, the Kestrel has a very, very high base lock range. It has 50 kilometers base, which you know, even if you're fighting a Maulus with free dams on you, it's not going to put you below your Scram web range. So you're perfectly fine without, with this skill at level 1, which you start out with. Yeah, I'd recommend you get just get it to level two because you know whatever it's going to take you an hour to get it there, and you know it's kind of okay. This is more a skill that you would train if you're doing like sniper light missile stuff. Although it's it's still not super useful, I don't think. This is more this is a skill that you train if you're doing other ship stuff, but on the Kestrel, it's not something that you want to get. It does help a bit with slingshotting, uh, damp condor, damp mollus. You know, the faster you can lock someone, because you know if you can lock them from from further from further away it means you can lock them faster and sometimes it can make a difference between you being able to get a scram web on them if you're slingshotting them or not but it's a, those ships are really rare especially being well flown really rare so uh, level two is fine get it to level three for polishing just because you know it's easy to get it to there but i, I wouldn't take it past that honestly unless you're tra training this for other ships uh, signature analysis increases your lock speed by five percent but it's not really that crucial. Like most of the, most of the fights you get in a frigate are people who want to fight you, rather than you trying to like catch someone who doesn't want to fight. So you know it's it's kind of okay if you want to catch like haulers and stuff. You know it can make a bit of a difference tr catching miners. I guess it, it makes a bit of a difference. But and it's a pretty efficient skill because you know it's only rank one. It's pretty easy to train. You know I'd recommend you, st you start out with this level one. That's fine for the basic fit. You know put it to level three just because you know it's going to take you five or six hours to get it to level three and that's perfectly fine. And, you know, it's a low priority upgrade past that. Uh, you do need to get this level 5 to train into recon ships. So, yeah, you know, maybe you might consider training it there. Uh, target management. Uh, target management. So, you start off, start out with the skill level 2, which is perfectly fine. Uh, you might want to put a point into level 3. But it's worth pointing out 
the Kestrel can only lock five targets max, and you know the only way you can increase that max uh, target locked is if you fit signal amplifiers or auto targeting systems, which you would never fit on a PvP Kestrel. So you never take this pass level three. Uh, the the only reason why you train it from level two to level three is it helps killing drones because you can draw the box of your ship. If you only have it at level two, you can only lock four targets. So you can lock three drones and the dude that you have scrammed. If you have it level four, you can lock four four you can lock uh, four drones and the dude you have scrammed. So it, it kind of helps a bit in those kind of matchups. But I mean, it, it's kind of low priority. Uh, but it's very easy to train rank one. Uh, that's all the skills. I also have a, a list of skills that you need to purchase and tr and train. Uh, if you if you starting off the the brand new color A character. So uh, there's three engineering skills that you need to buy: advanced weapon upgrades, nano interfacing, and nano operation. Uh, nano interface and nano operation you might want to consider saving off on because they cost six million is combined. Which, by the way, uh, the total cost for all the skills is nine point six five million is. You can save like two thirds of that price by not buying the nanite skills, and they're not essential by any means. Like like I mentioned, they're kind of utility skills. You can do fine without them trained, especially if you're PVPing in like not NPC nullsec where you where you're not like repairing like your stuff. You know, it's kind of the same thing as like shield operation. You know, it just helps you get back into a fight quicker. But but that's about it. Uh, for missiles, you know, guided missile precision, you need to get that, missile bombardment, missile projection, rapid launch, rocket spec, uh, it's worth pointing out, rocket spec, it costs 1 million isk from the, from the school station, but you can normally get it uh, cheaper from players, if you go to Jitter, you'll probably find it cheaper there, but it's probably only going to save you, you know, like 100 to 200k max. Uh, the reason why it's cheaper to buy it from players is because it's a reward from loyalty point store, uh, rockets are cheap, target navigation prediction is cheap. Warhead upgrades cost 1 million isk, but I mean it's pretty efficient just to get it to level 2. So you probably want to buy it anyway. Uh, jury rigging and launcher rigging, uh, you can normally get these uh, much cheaper in Jitter, but they're pretty cheap anyway. Like you're only going to save like 100k isk max. Uh, these these skill books uh, drop from exploration sites, so that's why they're mega cheap. But they're pretty cheap to begin with. And of course gravimetric, sensor conversation, in targeting. Those are the skills that you need to purchase. Uh, it's worth pointing out as well that you can get a lot of the basic skills from the uh, career agent. If you run the, if you press F12 and go to the career agent and run the military and advanced military uh, career agent things, which is probably something you want to do, especially if you're new to the game, uh, you will get some of these skill books for free. Uh, specifically the missile ones is what I'm talking about. I, I believe you get uh, target navigation prediction and a few others like missile bombardment for free but they're pretty cheap anyway but you know, if you're starting out you might want to you might want to run those uh, uh, those missions instead I also summarized uh, how long it takes for you to fly into the Kestrel uh, as well as the total SP for each of the tiers that I put out I'd recommend you uh, remap to 25 perception and 23 intelligence as I mentioned uh, this is a very good and healthy remap for a new player and it's not super specialized casual remap of any sort uh, intelligence intelligence and perception are the most useful attributes unless you're following a specialized plan like to become a trader or a leadership character or minor or a refiner unless you know exactly what you're doing uh, this is you know a very healthy remap uh, you, you can bring this time down as well like I mentioned if you use a, 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 a plan like Evemon and you like you know you, you remap to pure perception willpower you train all the perception willpower skills and you remap to intelligence memory and you train all the intelligence memory skills uh, if you want to do that uh, I, I'd not recommend that though unless you specifically want to make a Kestrel Smurf character and, and good on you if you want to do that so the basic Kestrel uh, this is without implants by the way all of the numbers that I've listed are without implants and without the injected SP you know obviously you do get 10k uh, free SP per day if you if you kill the rat daily which can also save time here and you know if you're gonna sit in a station and wait for the wait for it you know uh, plus one perception implant actually is really really cheap and you get one for free from the uh, military career agent so you, you can save some more time here too providing you don't get potted uh, you only need a 730k sp to go into the basic kestrel and that requires 1.1 million sp and that's uh, the, the basic Kestrel is decent enough that it can fight a few things. Uh, I definitely recommend the, the recommended Kestrel though, which is where it gets its name from. It, it's going to take you uh, about 72 days to get into the recommended Kestrel. You need just shy of 4 million SP for that. 
and uh, it, it needs 2.7 more million SP over the basic fit, and it's going to take you 57 days to get there. Uh, the, the main uh, training block in here is getting the two fitting skills level 5, CPU management and power grid management level 5, missile bombardment level 5, Godari frigate level 5. Uh, you could maybe c classify that as optional, and then navigation level 5. A few of the skills you can hold off on though, but you're probably not going to be able to... You can't f swap out from the basic Kestrel to the recommended Kestrel until you have the fitting skills and the missile moment level 5. So a, a lot of the training time is in uh, the fitting skills for this. So, and going from the recommended Kestrel to the polished Kestrel takes 137 days. And it takes an additional 6.5 million SP. And in total, the, recommended, uh, the polished Kestrel takes 209 days, which is a bit more than half a year. And you're going to have uh, 10 million, just over 10 million SP when you max out on the polished Kestrel. But uh, the thing is, you know, going from the recommended Kestrel to the polished Kestrel, you can train a lot of the skills that are useful for all ships, or especially like um, like the missile skills, navigation skills, shield skills, armor skills. They help all ships. So and you can also, you know, you can see a big difference going. Like you can just like like train skills here and there to improve the the recommended Kestrel to the polished Kestrel. So don't be like afraid. By the like huge like that two hundred nine days that it says on the polished kestrel. Also, like the, the difference between the recommended kestrel and the polished kestrel is not huge. Like you know, it's one hundred forty. It's like going from one hundred forty five DPS to one hundred sixty DPS. Like it's not a huge difference, right? And like okay, you get you get and like a lot of the advantages the polished kestrel has is fitting skills, but you only need weapon upgrades five, advanced weapon upgrades one, and shield upgrades level four, and launcher uh launcher rigging level four to go from the recommended kestrel to the polished kestrel, which will take about twenty days. So you can definitely like just swap out the fits pretty soon, and then just work on you know in increasing the small advantages here and there. Uh, I've already covered the fittings, uh, the matchups. I don't want to go into them now, but I've I've listed all the matchups here. I've put them into difficulty, easy, moderate, hard, very hard, and avoid. Uh, well, when you're flying the basic Kestrel, I'd recommend you only take the easy matchups. That this is like you know most of the Tech One figures I'd classify as easy. And most of the uh, most of the interceptors, uh, you can see this outline here as well. So it's very useful to just to jump to each each ship class and see which ships you can fight. Uh, for the basic astral, you're going to be limited to finding tackle interceptors. You want to avoid the combat interceptors. Uh, you can kill most of the electronic attack frigates, if, like Keras and Hyena, mostly because they're normally just like gate camping support ships. And if you catch them alone, you can kill them, providing their friends aren't there. And you can kill pretty much like all the uh, attack uh, attack frigates and the ones that don't have range, like Merlin, uh, Incursus. Uh, the Rifter's bad, so you can kill the Rifter. And uh, I'd avoid the I'd avoid the matchups I've classified as moderate. So you know, avoid Trist and avoid Breacher, uh, avoid Punisher, avoid Tormentor. Once you get into the recommended Kestrel, I'd say you can take the moderate matchups, and you might want to think twice about taking the hard matchups on my list. Because the hard matchups generally requ require you to have, uh, like, you know, the polished cash with decent skills. Some 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 ships I have two different ratings for, and that's because like the ship normally has like two or three different fits that are popular. And of course, uh, some ships avoid like the plague. You don't want to fight in anything. Uh, in the polished cash I'd recommend that you you can take the hard matchups, but they're still going to be hard. And uh, again, and you know, the very hard matchups are going to be very very hard. Uh, as mentioned, but it is possible. I, ha I have actually killed every single ship on this list in the Kestrel, uh, aside from the Confessor, actually. So, I mean, you know, it is possible. You're going to die like 9 times out of 10, though. Uh, the, the only time you normally kill them is if they're, like, terrible. Fortunately, there are, you know, there are a fair few terrible sweeper pilots. So, you know, even though I've put avoid, like, the plague here, it, it is definitely possible. I have killed, like, 2 or 3 uh, sweepers that are artillery fit. That don't know how to go into speed mode and double click in space. You know, there are there are a few gate campers who, <laughs> who who don't know the basic mechanics of the game that you can kill. Sorry for rambling on for so long. Check out my guide; it will be updated as time goes on. I'll be making a few more casual related videos over the coming month and improving the guide in various ways. So thanks for checking out my video. Peace out and take care.